go. It's a good start. In fact, the top, top three. I think that was pretty much top five. No, it just moved there by, I think, the lawn to get past Godfrey. No, it has gone one, two, three, four, five as they go around. So it is in order. Oh. Matt Chersley and Flinsky and Jeremy Delon, they come down there and already a slight gap as Chersley begins to gap. So let's look at the second and third battle, which is a little more active at the moment, which is the Rafinski and Delon. Still Rafinski slightly ahead of Delon, and in fact they're now condensing behind him with fourth and fifth with Gosvick and Pierre Delorme also now, so they're looking for an outside run. Chersley not getting away, but he's comfortably ahead. Oh, and just tip, no, no, was that a tip? I don't know, I think, oh, I think was, that, was, that might have been a little bit of good sport, oh, over sportsmanship there by the longer dropping him down, and that's the end of his run because he's upside down on his back. The longer crashes, I think, slightly off camera. So, big battle now, second, third, and fourth. The gaps over from Gosby because uh, he's got a bit of a wobble on, or was tapped very lightly coming this point here. The LRP switch, so it does mean we now have uh, uh, Pierre Delorme on the Delorme brothers into third. The cherry brand he had in the hotel last night, not slowing him down. And Rafflinski is in second, but away is Marit Journey from the Czech Republic. So the battle is very much the second, third and fourth, and it's Mike Gosvick in fourth with the yellow nose. So I think all three of these cars are X-rays. They popped within the stock class. He's out of the way now. Rastinsky now playing the percentages, running uh, slightly off the curves. The norm, they're all over the curves with the uh, white, with the pink nose machine, five car. He looked for a slightly different angle. He goes a bit wide there, and Gosvick couldn't take advantage of the Dane there. Looking at the inside of Frenchman, it just wasn't there. And this is a technical track. It's, 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 you really only over... And that's, that's a, you only overtake it as a mistake. And just saying that, Delore made a mistake, and Gosvick got through. Hitting the kerb, Delore bounces out in the first part of the FRE, and now he's let Gosvick through. Gosvick won one of the rounds yesterday, qualifying. And now he's going to set about getting up towards the things. The key point is that there's a lead now of 1.5. Four seconds for Gosvick. For Gosvick, 1.4 ahead. So it was 2.4. He's 2.4 ahead. So Gosvick. So Gosvick is Eric Cherney's lead. There's a Cherney now, 2.4 ahead. Lestinsky second. Gosvick third. Cherney about to get involved in napping the uh, the unfortunate orange car of number nine, which is Aaron Rose, who's a bit of a nightmare. But second and third. That's where the battle is. It's Rathinski and Gosvig. Coming in hard. It's the clean pass, that's the problem. Anyone can tap one and get past. We could all do uh, Audi at the Olish label and think it's wet, knock him out, Timo Scheider type job, but no, this has to be a clean pass. Through the RP switch they've done. Dropping ever, ever more dropping off Merrick Jeremy, he's picking up a couple of tenths a lap. These two guys are close enough, so you don't need to give you the gap. You can see the gap is as close as it can be without hitting each other. Now, luck completed. We are 3.15 down, 1.45 to go. Oswick is now coming from your eye out. Really, he's looking for a mistake from the Finsky. The Finsky was a little bit tight on the field, you know, but didn't unbalance the car. They go past the third part of the Efra. Down the straight, the speed is to the millimetre the same. Coming here, heartbreak, turn left in the Monza Kevin, and just, uh, just right back there. Because we're very close to Kevin's side, didn't What's happened, of course, is because Rathens is not going his maximum speed because he's trying to run a careful line, he's actually backing, um, Gosling back into Delorme. He was a couple of seconds off after his own mistake, and Rathens looks a little wide, a little wider, and he's now trying to, he's looking for a wide run in front of the driver's stand, trying to get more of a sweep in, hoping he can cut underneath. Rathens, you know, is just picking the line. When he picks the line, he probably won't have any problems. Don't forget, Mike Gosling out, and Marek Gosling right at Marek Cherny. Oh, grief, Nick, get English right. Marek Cherny out and away. Mike Gosling's in third, and it's Rathenski in second. So the number two car, we call the black tail from the number four car with the white tail. Both X-ray T415s behind them. If it's Lorne brother, it is... Pierre de Lorme. Oh, and that's the end for Gosvick. He's got, got too much curve and he rolled out. And that was the end of that battle. So suddenly he gets a bit of breathing space, but more importantly, de Lorme gets his point back. Let's see that again with that battle in, in the VRC Pro replay. They come into it, but everything's fine now. Gosvick not, he just, he's looking for the inside line and he just can't take that much curve. And uh, thank you. the VRC Pro replay showed exactly what went wrong with Mike Gosvick. He just came on a different line, thought, I'll risk it, I'll take the curve, I need the position, and it's all gone wrong. But he's dropped to four.
Mm. But Delorm stays in third. And now this is the last lap for everybody. Gosvig is about to go down the straight. Paul, that's our leader going down the straight. Gosvig there. Takes it nicely. Good win for Gosvig. And in many ways, not a surprise. So Gosvig with Livingston and Paul. That's he is second from second. Well, after constant pressure from different drivers the whole time. Pierre Delorme is first. Says he won't do it this time, but this is racing. Anything can happen. And they're off, and it's a clean start for the top three. A terrible start, actually, from the back. It's a clean start for the top few, and then there's a, there's a real problem at the back, and it's affected the two of Rosinski. So, in fact, he's now... Cheney's going to lead, and he's now being chased down by Delondra. So, Rosinski had a nightmare. I think he got... I'm not sure he got hit by someone who came across the track after the bad start, but effectively now, it's Gosvig from Rosinski. Now, now, dead did. So, so it's Cheney from Delondra. One from three. The check from the French. And the X-ray driver from the other X-ray driver. And they come around now. They've been now uh, going half a minute. They've got settled down after three laps. And Shirley's not getting away. Now, whether Delonde is one of the guys who decided not to use the new set of tyres, you've got one new set of tyres you can use for the finals. You can use any of the sets you use in qualifying, which you have two of. So everything's been used. He's certainly staying with Cherny reasonably well. In third place, it's Pierre Delorme. Fourth place, Tony Street. Fifth place is Jan Rosinski after that bad start. And he's fighting off the attentions of Mike Gosvig. But Cherny now being just to stretch his legs. That time around, he did a 16-3 against a 16-4 for Delondra. So Delondra is now coming under pressure from his countryman, Pierre Delorme. So Delorme, who is in that white car with the uh, kind of what is it, peachy colour, I suppose, really? Uh, to the sides and the roof. But Cherry makes a little bit of an error that time round and just drops back two tenths seconds. Oh, and that's... Tell you what, why don't we just hand the European Championship to Cherny? A second and third come together up the hill and they just click each other enough to a, put them back into the, uh, the clutch of Rathinski, but more to give Cherry a lovely little bit of breathing space. Gains himself 1.2 seconds just because those two had hit each other and that was entirely down to the lawn, tapping the back of uh, Delandre. So Delorme really should be on uh, Cherny's Christmas card list because it looks like Marek is going to pick up the European Championship. And then Delorme comes up the inside and does a two-corner pass there on uh, the three machines. He actually made up for his error by going actually rounding very nicely through the Durango D. I think it must be a slight mistake by uh, Delandre because there's no way you get past without a slight mistake. But Cherny carries on in his own way. A 16-4 that time round. 16-3-7 for Delorme. So that's a tiny game, but we are, have, we are just over... Just under halfway, 220 down, 240 to go. <coughs> and Mathinsky gets through into third. So it's Cherny leading, Delorme second, with the 63rd. And they're all spreading out a little bit. Let's pick up some time with our leader, because we won't see him next time round, because he's uh, will be retiring and leaving these boys to fight over the scraps. But Cherny looking hard now to pick up the second European Championship and another win for X-Ray, who have really got a massive team here. Cherny turning in, makes it really quite easy. It just dropped back to second and third, now gave it closer to Londra and Rathinski. I think he's making up for that very bad start where he got absolutely cr crunched at the side by um, a car spinning across the track. I may have got unsighted by it. And now he's got to try and catch down to Lorne. He's got a minute and a half to do it. In the two car, the multicolour car with a black tail against the uh, white and peach car. That's the five of Delorme. Mathinski in the X-ray trying to catch him up. Looking to dive up the inside, not this time. Takes a little bit too much curve there. There's also a little bit of momentum. He's now gone curb crazy, actually, Mathinski, trying to get round. <laughs> so Marek, a long way ahead. I mean, you see now that Delorme... Pierre Delorme, I have to give him his first name because it was his brother Jean is in this race in the light blue car. And he caused some of the, he was either involved with or caused with or was the result of the problems we saw in that first lap. But it's Rosinski doing his best to uh, pressurise Delorme into mistake, but with 40 seconds to go and up the road is a man who's going to become the European champion for the second time in a row. Because whatever Rosinski does, he's not going to get past him and then get past Journey unless uh, 
Cerny makes a mistake, which he doesn't really need to. There's no pressure whatsoever after they're coming together between uh, Delondra and Delorme. It's released him. He's now driving with himself, I'm sure. And they are all on their penultimate laps. So since he has two laps to get past uh, Delorme, Rathinski has uh, one. Oh, he's looking inside out and looking at the triple and the cut back. He's got him. Oh, that's a beautiful move. He's going to use it on the straight. And Rathinski, oh, that's naughty for him, Delorme. He's got to wait. Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. Who, what's going to come out of that one? Well, better leave that for a second. Can you pick up our leader who's going to the F for E now and about to come over the line? This is his last couple of corners. In fact, that seems to be the end of the race for them. And only apparently churning got the time. And there it goes. So Merrick wins this one, becomes European champion. But since he gets officially scored a second, Delondra third, and Delorme fourth. So, sorry, it's entirely actually up to him. He's only a kind of a, a fashion or a, not to run the third leg, but he's going out to get his extra value in his car. And he's off and away with Vasinski dropping second almost immediately. Oh, what a fight up there. And that's bad news for car three. He's got himself back in again, but Jeremy Delondra had a nightmare there. And oh, that's a bit iffy. Not about joining back there again. So Delondra has kind of sneakily joined in. He's lost enough places in fairness. And oh, up the inside goes Vasinski. vasinski has gone into second. And I wonder now Cherny has literally just got into that play rear gunner for for Rathinsky to get the runner up slot. So he'd let Rathinsky go, Cherny in second. In third it's uh, Jeremy it's Pierre Delorme, sorry. In the five car. So <coughs> Oh no, Delorme's got around Cherny as well. So uh, and now his brother in the light blue car as Jean Delorme is there as well. <coughs> so second, third and fourth are quite close together. It's second is uh, out in the lead is Jan Rathinski. Second is the peach and white car five of Delorme. Then it's Merrick Cherny with the X-ray, and then it's another X-ray of uh, Jean Delorme in the light blue. So Jean, who's uh, not really featured in these finals, managed to get a reasonably clean start. He's net up and around, but out and away, it's uh, Jan Rathinski. down with uh, 147 to go on 330 to go and three cars really sticking much together out, out and about so uh, rathesky has got a lead now of about a second and a half from Delorme. Delorme being chased down by Cherny. He doesn't really bother. He's already won the championship. The, uh, he has already won the championship. And then you've got Jean Delorme, the, uh, the other French brother in the light blue car. But he's in battle at the moment for second. Cherny and Jean de Pierre Delorme. Jean Delorme trying to get on terms. Marek not massively bothered about this, obviously, and there's a big mistake from Jean Delorme behind. So Marek and Pierre fighting for second place. Away and happy is Jan Rosinski. Pateski. We go to the F for E. A lot more curb taken by Marek. The Czech Republic driver and the Frenchman Delorme. The pink and white, or the peach and white car. It's orange, I suppose. It's hard to tell that it really is going towards us. Typical multicolored touring car shell for Marek. Combinations of blues and yellows and a bit of a swathe or anything else with it under a basic coat of white. Under no pressure whatsoever is our leader, Jaron Thensky, with a minute and 45 to go. He is happily away, and he's leading by something in the region of three seconds now. Mr. Lorme is comfortably holding back. And he dropped back to the, uh, the next battle, which is the blue car and the multiple colour car. That's Jean Delorme and Martin Hoffer. Hoffer with the hat is uh, all over the back of Jean Delorme. Actually, up the inside, oh, little nudge out, nudged him past there. So he's a uh, hats off to Martin for that move. <laughs> All right, well, they've got, got nothing from Matt then, with a minute and 12 to go. So Hoffer has moved himself up into uh, fourth. It's not going to do much to rescue, uh, not particularly still a section of finals. He's probably going to get himself into fifth or sixth overall.
So suddenly it's gone back together again. Hoff is now going to hand off with Jean Delorme, who's like right at the back of him with a couple of laps to go. And Simon Picard, leader, is about to come towards us, uh, Paul. He's coming up into the uh, Montec M. Last couple of laps for Rosinski. I think he'll actually get one more off because he started it earlier than others. So he should be okay. Delorme's just crashed his car completely there. Uh, so since he does get his final lap, gets another victory lap in the B final, in the A final of the spec, sorry. So he's going to, I think he will get himself through into second overall. Gareth is making it one, two, four, X-ray. There he goes. And he completes that one and wins the second. Wins the third leg of the final.